Chairs No Waiting, episode number 566. Happy 115th birthday, Howard McNear. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Head over there and check out some of the brand new Mayberry t-shirts we just got in. We have Myers Lake t-shirts. It's like, that's right, I'd rather be fishing at Myers Lake. And it says Mount Airy, North Carolina just outside of Mayberry. It's a great shirt, exclusive only to Weavers. Head over and check it out. We also have Barney Squares t-shirt. You can have four pictures of Barney on your shirt at four times the fun. Head over there and check it out at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donationers, donationers, <laughs> donations from listeners like you. The executive producer of episode number 566 is Ron Francis. So thank you very much, Ron for being a donator to the podcast to keep things going. And thank you for being here with me and here to listen to the podcast, even if I can't say donations, a donation or whatever I said. <laughs> Folks, we're going to be talking about Howard McNear. This is his, as I record this, this is actually on Monday night, the 27th of January, 2020. That would have been Howard McNear's 115th birthday. Yay, can you imagine? Wow, 115th birthday of Howard McNear. So I wanted to uh, tell you guys a little bit more about Howard McNear because I think you'll enjoy this. Okay, so I, I I guess I ought to do a little bit of background music. Maybe I can. So let's see. What's a good one? Uh, how about this? We'll just do that for Howard McNear. A little bit of background music just underneath me as I talk. But I want to tell you a story about him because I was in the, I was out on the internet trying to find information about him to get ready for this podcast. And there was a lot of information that was kind of incorrect. And there were several things I had never found. And I'm a little biased toward Howard McNear because you may know I do Floyd the Barber at uh, Mayberry events. I, I'm a tribute artist for Howard McNear. And so that's where this kind of all became part of what I do. So let's get into this and hear from Howard McNear. Then we'll hear from Randy Turner uh, after that. All right. So Howard Tarbell McNear was born January the 25th, 1905 in Los Angeles, California. His mother and father were in Zeta Spencer and Frank Ellis McNear. He had three older siblings. He had a brother named Frank Wood McNear. He was born in 1896, and he had a sister named Ruth Ellis, whom Howard never actually met because she only lived about eight months, and she passed away six years before his birth because she, she was born in April of 1898. And he had a second brother named Ellis Hedges McNear. Now, both the sister that passed away and his younger brother were both named after his father, Frank Ellis. So Ellis Hedges McNear, he was born, he was born well before Floyd as well, before Howard McNear in 1899. So in 1905 was when Howard McNear was born. Both Howard and his older brother, Frank, married wives by the name of Helen. Huh, that was information I never knew. Howard studied at the Ottman School of Theater, and he joined a theater company in San Diego where he was a leading man in the theater. He began working in radio in the late 1930s, finding some fame for himself as an action star. Can you, can you imagine that? Floyd as an action star? In the 1937 through the 1940 radio serial called Speed Gibson of the International Secret Police. It was a Johnny Quest type adventure show. And he played the role of Steve Gibson, the title character, his uncle and ace operator, Clint Barlow. That was Floyd. And you, uh, I've got to try to find that. I've never heard it. So it's Speed Gibson of the International Secret Police is where he kind of got started. All right. Uh, he was uh, very effective in taking authoritative roles like Clint Barlow, but he gravitated more towards character roles 
and often had a comic leaning in, in the roles he took. He eventually enlisted as a private in the U.S. Army Air Corps on November the 17th, 1942, during World War II, serving until 1945. In 1952, he created the role of Doc Adams, Doc Charles Adams, his name is Charles Adams, on CBS's Gunsmoke on the radio. It ran until... 1961 so from 1952 to 1961 he played doc on the radio version of gunsmoke now i did a podcast about that uh several years back uh that i definitely want to encourage you to go and check out there's several it was episode number uh 72 i think of the podcast something like that no 71 that was back in 2010 when i did that about Gunsmoke. There's a lot of them there, so I'll have a link in the show notes for that. But he originated the role of Doc. I just Wouldn't you love to see him as Doc on Gunsmoke? Of course, then we wouldn't have had him as Floyd in Mayberry. Let's move along here. Uh, Howard was under contract with CBS for many years and was featured in many of the network's radio and TV programs. From 1955 uh, to 1960, he appeared frequently in various roles on popular radio detective series called Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) And I've definitely heard those. It's a great radio show. Uh, It's basically a detective show. And uh, Howard is often on those. You'll hear him as the person hiring Johnny to go investigate something. That's what I've heard him. He made his film debut in an uncredited role in the 1951 sci-fi film The Day the Earth Stood Still as a boarding house resident. The film also featured Francis Bavier, Aunt B, and Olin Soule. Uh, is the, he was the choir director, John Masters, from The Andy Griffith Show. Yeah. The, over the course of his career, he would appear in 100 films and television guest spots. In 1958, Howard guest starred as a barber named Andy on an episode titled The Shave of Leave it to Beaver, a role which proved prophetic uh, of what was to come his way in just a couple of years. In 1961, he was cast as the talkative barber Floyd Lawson on The Andy Griffith Show. That's where we all know and love him from. During the show's run, Howard suffered a stroke that rendered the left side of his body nearly nearly paralyzed. He was off of the Andy Griffith Show from the episode Convicts at Large, which aired December the 10th, 1962. December the 10th is my birthday. Until March the 30th, 1964, in the episode Divorce Mountain Style. So he was off entire of not the entirety of 1963 and a few months there in 64 before he came back in Richard Kelly's book the Andy Griffith show Andy Griffith he had the following to say of actor Howard McNear Floyd Andy said this quote then Howard had a stroke and was bad off for a long time He was out of our show for about a year and three quarters. We did a lot of soft shows. That is, those were not hard on comedy. Stories about the boy or the aunt. But we needed comedy scenes to break things up. We were working on a script one day and Aaron Rubin said, Boy, do I wish we had Howard. And one of us said, Why don't we see if we can get him? So right then, we called up Howard's house, and we got his wife, Helen. Oh, she said, it would be a godsend. Well, we wrote him in a little scene, and he was paralyzed all down his left side, so we couldn't show him walking. Uh, We would had him sitting or built a stand that supported him. 
He could then stand behind the barber chair and use one hand. Most of the time, however, we had him sitting. His mind wasn't affected at all. He was with us about two years after that, before he finally died. Finally, poor Howard died. I'm sorry because there was never anyone like him. Kind, kind man. End quote. Yeah, that was, uh, that was Andy Griffith talking about Howard. I think that's a, a good testimony to Howard. So also in Richard Kelly's book, The Andy Griffith Show, Jack Dodson, Howard Sprague, had this to say about Howard McNear. He said, Unfortunately, I didn't know Howard before his stroke. Even after his stroke, he was just a wonderful human being and splendid actor. Sadly, it was during the playing of a scene with Howard that we realized that he couldn't go on anymore. It was a segment where I wanted to raise the rent on the barbershop. The characters had a falling out, and then at the end of the show, they were brought back together in the courthouse. Howard had a little difficulty with that segment. We had to change our shooting schedules so that his days were not quite as long as they had been. And then finally, we had a very simple scene of reconciliation. He couldn't remember it. He went over it and over it, frustrated with himself. Seeing his despair and anxiety was the most painful experience I've ever had. And then he didn't come back after that. On January the 3rd, 1969, Howard McNear passed away of complications from pneumonia caused by a stroke at San Fernando Valley Veterans Hospital in there in California. He was interred at the Los Angeles National Cemetery. Actor and old friend Parley Bear, Mayor Stoner, delivered his eulogy. Richard Link, the associate producer of The Andy Griffith Show, had this to say about McNear's funeral. He said, We went to the funeral, and I have to say, it was the only funeral I've ever been to where the laughs exceeded the tears. There were a couple of people who knew him well. They spoke in the form of a eulogy. I guess you could call it that. Oh, but it was funny. They related Howard McNear stories from the pulpit. It was something else. Really made a very nice thing. I think Hal Smith, who played Otis, got up there and said some things. It was something else, those stories. And yet it was all done with dignity. Oh, well, he was a nice man. When McNear passed away in 1969... His friend, Parley Bear, delivered the eulogy at the funeral. And he was survived by his wife, Helen, and his son, Christopher, a.k.a. Kit McNear. Hope you enjoyed that. That's a little bit of information about him. Now, if you'd like to hear Parley Bear talk about Howard McNear, I encourage you to go back in the archives of this show and head over to episode number 68. That's from January the 26th, 2010, 10 years ago. And start at episode 68 and listen to Howard McNear Remembered, part one. Then go on to the next episode, which is part two. And then keep going when Aaron Rubin remembers Howard McNear in episode 70 and then right on into 71 when Mayberry visits Gunsmoke because I've got to tell you those are some of the greatest episodes those are interviews that were done back in the day when this all occurred and they were telling stories about it so let me uh, play just a little clip from you as we were talking about Howard McNear being Doc on Gunsmoke William Conrad you, some of you are maybe old enough to remember him as Cannon. He was other things, obviously, but he was Matt Dillon on the radio version. 
And Chester was played by Mayor Stoner. So that's how come he knows him. So let's go and just listen just a little bit. I want you to hear Floyd, Howard McNear, as Doc on Gunsmoke. So let's check this out. Doc done all he could. Just, just weren't no use. I might as well not have come. I couldn't do a thing for him. Now, Doc, don't say that. You've been up 24 hours trying to save him. It's not time that saves a patient, Mrs. Crumley. It's knowledge. Knowledge I don't have. You know what there is to know, Doc. Nobody knows more. Your husband's dead, Mrs. Crumley. I wanted to save him. You tried. Uh, what are you going to do now, ma'am? Can we help you in any way? That's Matt Thank Dillon. you, Marshal. There's nothing. With Joe gone, I can't stay here. I reckon in a day or so, I'll, I'll pack up and move on. I I don't know where I'll go. I, I've got no place. I, excuse me, I've got to get him place. Mayor Stoner? No, oh, that poor lady... He didn't have to die. It's not your fault, Well, then Doc. whose fault is it, I'd like to know? Now, Doc, you're not making sense. It's being a doctor that doesn't make sense. Spending my life trying to look into the faces of people like Mrs. Crumley and having to listen to them thank me for letting their people die. Oh, I'm sick. You need a drink, Doc. I know what I need. Now, why don't you leave me alone? Get your horses off my buggy and go on up to Larned or wherever you're headed for uh, yeah, sure, Doc. Come on, Chester. So there you go. That's uh, that's Howard McNear as Doc on Gunsmoke on the radio version. What a career he had. He also did uh, m- many, many voices for Hanna-Barbera. You'll see him on the uh, cartoons of uh, the Flintstones, the Jetsons. I've definitely seen him on both of those. Heard him, not seen him, but heard him. Uh, he just did so many things. He did Elvis movies. Uh, there's just so much. And I'll have links in the show notes to the Wikipedia page where you can go and see his filmography if you'd like to see what all he did. But what an amazing man he was. And from everything I've heard, he was an extremely nice man. So happy birthday, Howard McNair. And thank you for all that you've done. For Mayberry, and for me in particular. Thank you. All right, so let's go in here from Randy Turner with This Week in Mayberry History. Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. As detailed last week, The Andy Griffith Show creator Sheldon Leonard and Aaron Rubin saw Maggie Peterson singing in Scottsdale, Arizona, and thought the band's lead vocalist might be a possible candidate to play the first love interest of Sheriff Andy Taylor in the series that was set to begin filming in July 1960. Just because Maggie and Andy Griffith shared Dick Link as a manager did not mean she had a lock on any role. Maggie read for the part of Andy's girlfriend, but as we know, the role ultimately went to Eleanor Donahue, one of the stars of the just-ended series, Father Knows Best. Maggie has said Eleanor was perfect for the part, and that the role was always hers. Maggie continued her enormously successful singing career, fronting Margaret Ann and the Ernie Mariani trio, and of course continued to sometimes cross paths with Andy, since they shared a manager. During the third season of The Andy Griffith Show, writers Jim Frizzell and Everett Greenbaum created a mountain family called the Darlings. Maggie was approached by The Griffith Show once again, this time to read for the part of the teenage flirtatious daughter of Briscoe Darling and the only sister to his four silent boys. The script had called for Charlene to be voluptuous, likely envisioned by the writers as more a Daisy May character, as seen in the comic strip Lil Abner. They admitted surprise when they saw the role had been filled by the unquestionably attractive Maggie, 
since she had a tall, thin frame. The writers were also quick to say that Maggie easily made the role her own. Charlene and the rest of the Darlings were first seen in The Darlings Are Coming, which aired on March the 18th, 1963. The response was positive about the Darling family, with Maggie's brothers being played by the now legendary bluegrass band, The Dillards. Another appearance was planned right away, though Maggie continued to perform with her musical trio between the episodes being filmed. The Darlings appeared again on April the 29th, 1963, in Mountain Wedding. The larger-than-life characteristics of the Darling clan lead some casual fans to think they were on the show more than they really were. The family actually appeared in only six episodes. Maggie played Charlene in five of those episodes. In Briscoe declares her Aunt B, she was not included in order to keep the focus on Aunt B in the storyline. In 1964, Maggie was cast as a series regular in The Bill Dana Show, a sitcom about Jose Jimenez and Hispanic bellhop at a New York City hotel. She did not appear in every episode, which enabled her to appear as Charlene again in the fifth season episode, The Darling Baby. Maggie's singing was often featured along with instrumentals played by the Dillards. In this episode, she sang a beautiful song written by Mitch Jane and Rodney Dillard called There Is a Time. Mayberry fans agree with Sheriff Andy's assessment upon hearing the tune when he said, well, I believe that's the prettiest thing I ever heard. In addition to playing Charlene two more times, Maggie also appeared in a 1965 episode of Gomer Pyle USMC as a friend of Sergeant Carter's girlfriend, Bunny, who wound up on a blind date with Gomer. She played Sam Jones' date, Doris, in the last episode of The Andy Griffith Show to be filmed, though it was aired next to last. Maggie was the opening act for Andy in a series of nightclub acts when he was performing in Lake Tahoe in 1968. While doing so, she met jazz musician Gus Mancuso, whom she eventually married. Maggie reunited with her former castmates when she appeared in Andy Griffith's 1969 film, Angel in My Pocket, and in Don Knotts' film, The Love God, the same year. She appeared at the end of 1970 in an episode of Mayberry RFD, making her one of a select few actors to have appeared in The Andy Griffith Show and both of its spinoffs. After appearing in other series such as Green Acres, Love, American Style, and The Odd Couple, Maggie reprised her role as Charlene in the 1986 reunion television movie Return to Mayberry. Maggie retired from acting in 1987 but in the mid-1990s, worked as a location manager for the Nevada Film Commission. She continues to perform in Las Vegas and at her regular appearances at Mayberry events. She is treasured by the Mayberry community. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. All right, everybody, if you uh, want to make sure you don't miss out on anything that Randy has to tell us about Mayberry and the stuff going on around it, you'll email him at turnersgrade at gmail.com, turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he'll make sure you don't miss out on anything. So let me make a correction here. I evidently said that Floyd's birthday was January the 25th, 1905. It's the 27th. So that's probably one of the things I wrote down wrong as I was <laughs> doing it. So thanks to the chat room for catching that. I see where I said it. So his birthday was, as I record it, today, because it's January the 27th, 2020. So it's his birthday today. So thank you, Kathy, for catching that. And thank you, Randy, for another great report. Folks, it is always fun for me to spend a little bit of time here in Mayberry with you, and I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do. Uh, I would love to hear from you. That's right. I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. You can send me an, uh, a voicemail by calling 888-684-8415. 
and tell me what you think. I would love to hear that. And just any way you'd like to get in touch with me, I would love to hear from you. So, again, happy birthday to everybody's birthday that is today, because I know a few people. And also, happy birthday to Floyd the Barber, Howard McNair. All right, everybody, have a great Mayberry week. Let me hear from you, and we'll see you next time right here on Two Chairs. Good night, everybody.